okay uh, welcome back now uh, so we will continue with uh, the concept of state feedback and uh, uh, the algorithm that we call the pole placement okay uh, so uh, state feedback is basically a way of designing controllers and by uh, what we mean by designing controllers is that uh, we can change the location of the closed loop uh, poles of the system so that a desired behavior uh, can be obtained. So uh, today I will continue with pole placement uh, concept. Uh, so let's uh, start uh, by writing our uh, topic again. Uh, Pole placement uh, by state feedback. Continued. Continued is, uh, I believe, this is our part two of the topic. Uh, if you remember uh, our last discussion, we uh, have shown that if the system is given uh, in controllable canonical form or if it's given as a transfer function but you put it into a uh, controllable canonical form uh, by defining uh, states uh, in a particular way in fact the pole placement algorithm becomes uh, very straightforward because uh, in a sense each one of the feedback gains actually become tied up with one of the coefficients uh, of the desired characteristic equation okay so what we have seen is that uh, if the system system representation uh, is in a controllable canonical form Uh, that means that uh, very uh, easy pole placement. Essentially, what we have seen is that we have uh, some decoupled equations. Decoupled uh, equations. One for each... Uh, sorry. One for each... Uh, ki okay ki is being uh, our feedback gains okay now uh, now the question that we have now is that uh, what if uh, the system is uh, in state space form those so the states are already defined okay states already defined uh, such as uh, in an electrical circuit where uh, naturally you define a capacitor voltage as a state and the inductor current as a state. So the physical uh, nature of the uh, system actually suggests you a certain number of states. Uh, we know that these are not mandatory states, but they come naturally. So it's easier to understand the system with such states okay but if the states are already defined but the system is not in a controllable canonical form how do we how do we uh, uh, let's say uh, apply Pole placement. So how do we uh, manage to put the closed loop poles of the system in the desired locations? And I want to illustrate this by uh, essentially an example. Okay. So uh, it's going to be a simple example, and later on, uh, I will uh, proceed with a slightly larger example. Uh, so let's say that our system is given by uh, Actually, a uh, system is second order and is given by the following uh, state equations, okay? So I will have uh, an A matrix given like this. Remember that x and x dot are vectors. Uh, 
and we have a scalar input so uh, a single input to the system and we have also a scalar or a single output okay now if you uh, check um, the ABC matrices you will notice that the system is not in controllable canonical form uh, it's also not in observable canonical form okay uh, let's say that um, uh, desired pole locations uh, means after state feedback you can also call this uh, closed loop right in the usual manner okay uh, and let's say that uh, the first pole uh, let's say that uh, p1 is at uh, plus one uh, p2 is at uh, minus three now you might ask obviously uh, what's the point of having an unstable pole in the closed loop um, there's not much point in having uh, an unstable pole. We usually would like to pole, uh, would like the poles to be in the uh, negative uh, left half plane. Uh, that means in the stable region. But uh, this is to illustrate uh, that pole placement is not limited to designing for stable poles. You can actually have any arbitrary poles and the algorithm or the method would still work. And after the state feedback, you would have the closed loop system poles uh, located uh, in your uh, desired uh, locations. Okay, so now let's um, the first thing uh, uh, to check is uh, the system uh, to be completely controllable even if it's not we know that if the system is given in com, uh, controllable canonical form uh, in fact it's gonna it's gonna be completely controllable and you can check that but uh, if it's not given in controllable canonical form we need to check that the system is completely controllable okay so that is the first step in any uh, state feedback design that you need to check whether the given state space representation is completely controllable okay this will guarantee that you will have a solution uh, uh, when you're applying the state uh, uh, pole placement uh, algorithm okay so let's construct the controllability matrix this is given by b uh, a b for a second order system okay so uh, b obviously is a column vector here right so uh, one and two comes from B and the second column comes from uh, the multiplication of the A matrix with the B vector. So uh, so you will have to uh, multiply right the, the row uh, with the column. So this is minus one times one uh, plus which makes minus one right plus one times two. Uh, so that makes a total of one. OK, similarly, one times one. Uh, plus minus two times two okay so this is one minus four so it's gonna give us uh, minus three so this is our controllability matrix now what is the determinant of the controllability matrix remember that this matrix need to be uh, non-singular so the determinant is equal to one times one right this product minus two times uh, one so that is one minus two is equal to minus one okay and it's enough that it is different from zero okay so uh, the system is completely controllable okay so that's our check now let's take a look at what we can do if we don't have the controllable canonical form okay now we need to write the desired characteristic equation uh, how we can do that uh, well we can do that from the given uh, poles uh, from the given desired poles 
Okay, so we know that, uh, let's call this uh, Q desired of S, and that is given by uh, from plus 1 and minus 3, so that's going to be S minus 1 for the uh, pole which is at plus 1, and we also have S plus 3 for the pole that is at uh, minus 3. Okay, so uh, Q desired of S, that's going to be uh, s square uh, minus s plus 3s, so it's going to be plus 2s, and minus 1 times 3, it's going to be minus 3. Okay, so that is our desired characteristic equation. Now we also need to find the characteristic equation of the system that is the result of the state feedback. Okay, so uh, so that we need to take a look at characteristic equation of the closed loop system with closed loop uh, system with state feedback. Uh, how can we find that? Uh, well, we know that the state feedback has a particular effect. Uh, on the A matrix, so let's call this A tilde matrix, that's going to be A minus B times K, okay, where uh, K is actually a row vector composed of the feedback gains, okay, K1 and K2. So that's going to be uh, our A matrix is 1, 1, 2, minus 3, so 1, 1, 2, minus 3, Okay. Oh, sorry. I'm looking at the wrong matrix. Sorry. Uh, so let me uh, erase that. So that was the uh, controllability matrix. Let's go back a little while. So minus 1, 1, 1, minus 2. Okay. So uh, that is equal to uh, minus 1, 1, uh, 1, minus 2 minus uh, b times k. What is our b? Uh, our b is 1 and 2, a column uh, matrix, and k is a row matrix, k1 and k2. So you see this is a matrix which is 2 by 1 multiplied by a matrix which is 1 by 2, so uh, the resulting matrix will be uh, a 2 by 2 matrix. Okay, so that's uh, from basic linear algebra. Uh, so this uh, product will be uh, equal to minus 1, 1, 1 minus 2. And this product will be equal to 1 times k1, k2. So we will have k1, k2 here and 2 times k1 and k2 on the second row, 2k1, uh, 2k2. Okay, so the result of this operation will become uh, simply uh, a matrix uh, which is fully a function of uh, the k uh, variables. So that's going to be minus 1 minus k1, uh, 1 minus k2, uh, 1 uh, minus 2k1 and minus 2 minus 2k2. Okay. Now, what is our characteristic equation? Uh, so, a uh, new uh, characteristic equation. Uh, remember that for a state space system, the characteristic equation uh, Q of S is actually equal to the determinant of S times the identity matrix minus uh, this new uh, uh, matrix A tilde. Okay, so that's going to be equal to the determinant of right uh, the matrix that is uh, remember, S times I is a matrix like this, S0, 0, S. 
So uh, when we subtract a tilde from that, we will have S plus 1 plus K1 on entry 1, 1. Then we will have uh, 0 minus 1 plus K2. So it's going to be K2 minus 1. Then uh, we will have, uh, again, on this corner over here, uh, 0 minus 1 plus 2K1. So 2K1 minus 1. And finally, over here, we will have S plus 2 plus 2K2. Okay. So, uh, obviously, uh, the determinant is given by multiplying uh, entry 1, 1 with entry 2, 2 uh, minus uh, the other uh, corners multiplied. So, we will have uh, S plus 1 plus K1 uh, multiplying uh, 2, sorry, um, S plus 2 plus 2K2 minus uh, 2k1 minus 1 uh, multiplying uh, k2 minus 1 okay so let's expand the first part so that's going to be s square plus 2 plus 2k1 sorry 2 plus 2k2 times s uh, so s square s uh, with the second part, okay, and then we will have uh, 1 plus k1 times s uh, plus 1 plus k1 multiplying uh, 2 plus 2k2 uh, minus, let's uh, expand this part as well, uh, so that's going to be minus 2 k1 k2, okay, uh, and then uh, plus 2k1 plus uh, k2 minus 1. Okay. Now let's uh, try to regroup things over here. Okay. So I'm going to have s square uh, plus, let's count how many s's we have. We have uh, basically... Um, so 2k2 plus k1, 2k2 plus k1 uh, plus 3 uh, times s, okay? Uh, so we have, um, uh, and then uh, we have uh, 3, plus uh, 2k2 plus 2k1 uh, plus 2k1 k2 minus 2k1 k2 uh, plus 2k1 uh, plus k2 minus minus 1. Hopefully I didn't make any mistakes here. Uh, let's regroup everything. Uh, so we have S square plus uh, 2 K2 plus K1 plus 3 S plus, uh, okay, so these cancel out. So I have 2 K1 over here, 2 K1 over here. So I have 4 K1. Uh, so I have uh, 2 K2 over here uh, plus K2. So I have 3 K2. And uh, I have 3 minus 1, uh, so I have 3 over here, minus 1 over here, uh, so I have uh, plus 2, but did I make any mistake? Let me check. Uh, according to my notes, uh, we might have an Maybe my notes have an error or I have made a mistake over here. Let me check. Okay, RC where the mistake is. Uh, basically, uh, this I made a mistake over here. So this one is not 3, but it's 2. 
okay so that uh, we have 2 minus 1 so this one's not 2 uh, but it's uh, equal to 1 okay so uh, so our uh, overall uh, we have k1 plus 2k2 plus 3 times s plus 4k1 plus 3k2 uh, plus 1 okay is our uh, characteristic equation uh, that is based on the state feedback okay now uh, what is important here is that the solution comes from equating this to actually uh, the desired characteristic equation because we want as a result of the state feedback we want the system to have the desired characteristic equation okay so what was our desired characteristic equation it was equal to s square plus 2s uh, minus 3 so you see that you have two polynomials that are equated to each other uh, one has coefficients that are functions of k and the other have coefficients that are fixed so what you get is that uh, you get two equations uh, with two unknowns uh, that are simply, uh, you know, uh, arising from uh, from this uh, equality. Okay, so let's write them down. So we have k1 plus 2k2 uh, plus 3, that is equal to plus 2. That means uh, we have k1 plus 2k2 is equal to uh, minus 1. So that is one of the equations, okay? And the other equation comes from the second uh, uh, coefficient, 4k1 plus 3k2 uh, is equal to uh, minus 3 minus 1. That is equal to minus 4. So 4k1 plus 3k2 is equal to minus 4. And that is our second equation. Now, what is the difference from the case where we have controllable canonical form? Uh, the difference is that now, okay, uh, we have a coupled, coupled system of equations uh, in terms of uh, K1 and K2 the two unknowns okay so uh, you know you can solve these two uh, equations the system of equations um, whichever uh, way you want you can eliminate one of the variables from one equation and replace it in the second equation to solve for the second variable okay the way that I'm gonna uh, solve it is again uh, you know as an example uh, I will use uh, Gauss-Jordan elimination uh, the reason for that is that Gauss-Jordan elimination would uh, simply work with much larger uh, systems of linear equations and not for not only for 2 by 2 uh, or you know a very small number of uh, variables okay so the way we do that is that we construct a matrix okay from these two equations uh, where we have uh, the coefficients of the uh, unknowns are for, form the first part of the matrix and the right hand side of the equations form form the uh, augmented part over here so you see that minus 1 and minus 4 goes over here okay and in here we simply put the coefficients uh, uh, of the unknowns okay so from here for example I have 1 as a coefficient from here I have a 2 as a coefficient and similarly from the second equation I have 4 and 3 forming our uh, our augmented matrix now uh, the way to solve this is that uh, you transform the first part uh, 
make this part uh, identity matrix using elementary row operations. Row operations. That means you will uh, multiply one row with a constant and add it to another row in order to eliminate uh, or make one, uh, you know, uh, the, the other row. So we will uh, make uh, certain operations over here. The first one that we will make is that we will leave the first row intact, but we will eliminate uh, this number over here. And the way to do that is to multiply uh, the first row by 4 and subtract from the second row, okay? So in this case, this entry becomes 0. 2 times 4 is 8. 3 minus 8 uh, gives us uh, minus 5. And 4 times minus 1 uh, makes minus 4. Uh, subtracted from minus 4 is actually makes uh, this part 0 as well, okay? Now, uh, we will divide the second row by minus 5, so that uh, so the first row is identical. The second row divided by minus 5 uh, makes this part 0, 1, and because all else is 0, uh, nothing happens there, but you have now a 1 over here, okay? And the last uh, elementary row operation is that now I will leave the last row uh, intact, but I will multiply uh, the last row by two and subtract from the first row. So this one is intact, this one becomes uh, zero, and zero times two subtracted from minus one actually uh, gives us a minus one, okay? So once this part is the identity matrix, this part becomes uh, simply K1, K2, okay? So that is one way of solving uh, coupled linear equations. So my result is that uh, my state feedback coefficients are K1 equals to minus 1 and simply K2 is equal to 0, okay? <clears throat> So that uh, completes uh, our example, uh, and I'm going to continue uh, with another example uh, in the next video uh, that corresponds to a 3x3 three three, uh, matrix uh, to show you uh, how that is done. And uh, I believe that last examples will uh, basically conclude this, uh, this term's topics. Um, uh, what we will not cover uh, is... Uh, you know, that's something uh, that will be covered in uh, in the fourth year uh, if you select the control option, uh, is uh, where we go from observability, uh, and that is called uh, uh, a system called an observer, uh, a system that is used to estimate the states when they cannot be directly measured, okay? So that's going to be left for uh, your future uh, more advanced control courses. Okay, so let's break here uh, and I'm going to come back uh, with, an with another example.